Greetings and praise the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Minister Coleman, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of the Sunday School International on Christians Endeavor YouTube. I want to thank you especially for all of the viewers, all of the subscribers, those who have voiced their amen through their likes, amen for the content that has come across this station. And we encourage you to keep coming, amen. Keep speaking out. Keep um, showing the world that you appreciate and that you are receiving the word of God through this station so that others can be blessed across the world. Amen. Remember, it's not just about us, but whenever we view, whenever we like, whenever we subscribe, it lets YouTube know through the algorithm that the message that is teached and preached on this station, it needs to be sent abroad. Amen. And so that is our personal way in which we can evangelize and push the word of God. Amen. Throughout the world. So I want to especially thank you for helping me to do that. It is my earnest desire that through this station, through the content, and through the way that God used me, that it will be able to edify your spiritual life. Amen. And also your life in general. Amen. So our lesson for today, dated January the 30th, the topic of our lesson is justice and the marginalized. And we have a lot of marginalized people that are around us, that are among us, and perhaps we may be one of them. Amen. So this lesson is uh, looking forward to give us some very uh, special things, amen, that we need to employ but also we need to remember. Amen. Amen. And our lesson is going to come out of that fifth book of the law. Amen. Of the Pentateuch. Amen. Uh, of Moses, who is the writer of this book, the book of Deuteronomy. Amen. It is the book, the second law. This wonderful book um, called the second law, the Mosaic law. Amen is just simply reiterating and stressing God's desires, his requirements, and his laws. God seeks to establish a government with the children of Israel before they go over into their promised land of Canaan. Amen. God wants to make sure that everybody is on the same page as him. Amen. And that he gives him gives his people what they need. Amen. As a foundation to be able to stand on so that they may be blessed and prosperous and that they may be able to live in harmony in the land that he is giving them. That's what this book is about. So we know the original Ten Commandments came out of that book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible. But his laws run through Exodus, Leviticus, and then you will see also Deuteronomy. Amen. So God is constantly trying to instruct his people. And instructions are good because instructions guide us. It illuminates our way and it keeps us within safe perimeter. Amen. So that we can continue to be in God's good graces. Amen. And so our key verse for today's lesson comes from verse 18 and it reads, but always remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God redeemed you from your slavery. This is why I'm giving you this command. Yeah. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to join me in the word and the New International Version is where I'll be reading from. But our text is Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, the 10th through the 21st verse. Amen. Let's pray and get into our lesson. Father God, again, we thank you 
this day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we have come not just to rejoice and be glad in it, but we come to learn of your ways, God. So we pray right now in this lesson that you could teach us your ways. Expose your word to us, God. Reiterate your requirements unto our hearts, Lord. Allow the viewers, amen, to be able to receive this word and make preparation to apply this word promptly. We pray, God, for clarity and understanding of the teaching of this word today. Bless your people in a special way. This is my prayer in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, our topic, justice and the marginalized. So we are, we're still in this vein of our quarterly justice, law, and history. And we're still in unit two that God requires justice or God is the source of justice. And yes, he does also require it. And that's what the last three lessons um, has been dealing with. Uh, God teaching us how to employ this word justice, amen, um, fairly, rightfully, uh, civilly, uh, showing us how to be able to have respect um, one towards another, not just in the church, but also in the land that we are living in, amen, um, to apply the golden rule, amen, that we are to do unto others as we want others to do unto us, that we do have a responsibility, amen, to our brother, amen, to our brother or our sister or our neighbor, amen. Um, so this is the message that God is trying to get over to us in uh, these past few lessons. We see that um, throughout the book of Exodus, as they are preparing to exit um, from Egypt, um, as they were twirling around in the wilderness, and now they're preparing to exit the wilderness and go into the new land, that God understands that they need an establishment, a foundation of good, godly, godly government. Amen. And so the, uh, the word that we are reading, the scriptures, um, they're going to talk from the aspects of civil society and the laws that we need to apply there domestically in our homes, amen, in our community, um, how we need to apply the law in that area. And also it speaks to us individually, amen. We have a personal responsibility to be self-governed by the word of God and by God's instructions. That is very important because if we don't get it right individually, wherever we go, amen, we're going to screw up or we're going to be negatively influenced to do something contrary to the word. So it is very important that we see this word first and we digest this word first for us, amen, to better and improve our way of living and our way of thinking. Um, and then in our homes, we have to put this word to work in our homes. Uh, the government and society um, is only messed up and jacked up because this word is not being employed in the homes. Amen. And in the homes, it needs to be first implied uh, and applied and uh, made applicable to us as individuals. Amen. So it is very important that we take those necessary steps, starting with us first. Somebody say it starts with me first. I have to be what I want to see. Amen. I have to be what I want to see first. Amen. And then things will begin to improve around me. You want to know why the workplace is jacked up? Why our government is jacked up is because, and why our churches is jacked up, amen. Why our schools are jacked up is because of us, amen. It all trickles down to one person. Each one of us have a responsibility, amen. And God wants to 
improve us first so that we can improve the world at large. One person, one soul, one heart at a time. Amen. So, um, again, this book of uh, Deuteronomy, um, this is the very last book of Moses that he wrote before Moses would be dying and going off the scene. So Moses, in his elderly years, um, he wants to put this law down on the behalf of God the final time, trying to get the children of Israel to make sure that they pattern themselves um, after this instruction and that they uphold the government that God wants to establish with them as his people. Amen. So this is Moses' last round. This is his last lap. Amen. Um, Moses wound up dying. Amen. At 120 years old. Amen. We'll find that over in that 34th chapter of Deuteronomy. Amen. So we thank God for Moses. We thank God for Moses' leadership, his humanity. Amen. He didn't want to lead. Amen. But God chose him and he was compliant to God. Amen. Um, so we thank God for his example. Amen. We thank God that Moses was also an interceder. He was the priest. Amen. The spiritual leader that God had chosen to be over the children of Israel. And he served God faithfully. And he served the children of Israel faithfully. Amen. In his humanity, there was some moments, amen, where his uh, humanity, um, what, or the weakness of his humanity was shown. But overall, God used Moses. He used him to write these five very critical law books. Isn't that something that the Bible, the instructions, the basic instructions before leaving earth, that is the acronym of Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth, amen, that Moses was privileged to write the first five books of the Bible, and those books gave an establishment for law. It gives us uh, how we are supposed to live. Amen. And with the theme of, if you want to have a blessed and prosperous, prosperous life, you need to get your life together. You need to live orderly. Amen. God has a divine order. Amen. And we have to line up with that order. If we want to be safe, if we want to be blessed, and if we really want to be in a position to bless others, amen, which is a great deal of our living. It's not just about us. It's about how we're able to bless the next person's life. So let's get ready to get into this word. Okay, so we're going to start off with verse 10 of the 24th chapter of Deuteronomy, and it reads, the first, uh, the 10th and 11th verse we're going to tackle, amen. If you lend anything to your neighbor, if you lend anything to your neighbor, this is like face up, this face, this like, if you lend, <laughs> he's talking to us, anything to your neighbor, do not enter his house to pick up the item he is given as security. So in other words, don't invade someone's property, amen, uh, if you lend them something and whatever you lent them, it is in their house. Amen. What God is saying is don't violate them. Um, don't trespass on their property because you want your stuff back. Amen. Um, I lent you this and now it's time for you to give it back. Well, if you don't give it back, then I'm going to go up in your house. Come on now, y'all. We know we can't do this. So if you lend anything to your neighbor, don't enter his house. To pick up the item he is given as security. And verse 11 says, you must wait outside while he goes in and brings it out to you. That's simple. Amen. That's, uh, I mean, if we should be scratching our head. You are trespassing if you enter someone else's property without their permission. That's a, somebody say, that's a problem. Amen. So again, God has given us some very basic elementary instructions on how to treat and respect our neighbor. Amen. Don't provoke your neighbor. Nowadays, you could go trespass it up at people. I don't care if they owe you something back, but you can enter their house if you want. 
And nowadays, people are, uh, <laughs> they upholding it. They're not going to take the time to call 911 to say somebody trespassing my, yeah, I owe him some officer, but, um, they, nah, what they doing now is they taking action. You go knocking on their door at three o'clock in the morning, banging on their door. Um, give me back what you owe me or give me what you owe me. And you may be suffering some direct consequences, if you know what I mean. Amen. Uh, use your imagination or watch the news. Amen. So he's telling us that's not cool. That don't do it. Amen. Don't do say don't do it. Amen. Verse 12. It says, if your neighbor is poor and gives you his cloak or gives you his raiment, amen. Um, that thing that keeps him secure as security for a loan. Maybe you're loaning him something and he need he don't have the money to give you or to put up for the loan, but he may give you something that's very valuable to him. Amen. So if he gives you his cloak as security for that loan, as a good faith deposit, amen, don't keep the cloak overnight. So God is telling us, yes, it may be um, in proper order for someone to put down their deposit or to put a security deposit down on a loan or something they are looking forward to us providing for them. But God is telling us to go the extra mile. Go the extra mile and be kind to this person. Um, be empathetic to this person to not just exploit them because you see that they have a need and they're coming to you for that need. And so you're going to say, okay, so what you going to give me in exchange for me giving you what you want? And you feeling around in your mind, you want to hurt them. You want to take something that's very valuable or something that you know that they're going to need temporarily while they are waiting on the big thing from you. So you're going to say, okay, you will need to put this up. And you know that that thing that you're asking them to put up is something that they really need to hold on to. So God is telling us to don't be shrewd like that. Amen. All that we have that we can lend to another person, God gave to us. We don't own this thing. We don't come into the world with anything. So everything that we own that God has given us as surplus that enables us to be able to give to others. It's not ours anyway. Amen. God only made us steward over it, steward over it. And the best way to utilize your stewardship over whatever God has given you. I don't care what it is. It can be money. It can be uh, your car, your vehicle, your home, um, possessions, food, um, various services that God may have blessed you to be able to offer to other people. None of that is yours. Amen. You did not attain that. Don't be tricked by the devil because he'll tell you that you did it all, but you didn't do it all. God enabled you to do it so that you can be able to serve others with it. So this is what God is trying to portray in this 12th verse. Amen. Don't try to cripple your, uh, the person you're lending things to, amen. Don't try to hurt them, twisting their fingers, amen. Just because you are in a position, uh, to be generous to them. But God tells us in verse 13, through his word, he says, but even if they offer you their cloak, just as their good faith security for the thing that they may need from you, he said, return that cloak to them. Return it to its owner by sunset. Don't let the day go by um, with you holding and harboring on to whatever that security was that that person gave to you. Amen. Give it back to them so that they can stay warm, as the scriptures say, through the night. And they will bless you for it. Amen. They will be great, grateful. Amen. Um, and they would thank God that they know you could have asked for that deposit. They know you could have taken something in exchange or this particular thing that was very valuable to them in order to secure the loan that they needed from you. But because you were willing, because you were nice, because you were generous enough to say, you know, I know what you need. I'm going to provide what you need. And you just hold on. You hold on and you keep this thing you don't have to put it up for security. Amen. I'm just going to do what I need to do unto you because God has blessed me to do it. Well, that person 
um, heart will be blessed. And ultimately, they will give God or acknowledge God, or hopefully acknowledge God, they should acknowledge God, amen, that God favored them, amen, and provided for them through you. And in turn, God will bless you, amen. You will get your reward directly from God, not this particular security thing you're trying to hold on to or um, take from this person. Remember, God sees what we do um, when we are uh, a benefit to others, amen? And he blesses us, amen? He says our reward will come directly from him, amen? And the Lord your God will count you, amen, as righteous. Verse 14, never take advantage of poor and destitute laborers or workers, um, or slaves, amen, oftentimes they had the slaves back then, but don't take advantage of them. Remember, we're talking about marginalized people, people who um, have been hurt by life, um, people who may be destituted by life or some situation that has occurred in life, amen, they are at a disadvantage, amen, maybe at one point they was on top of the world, they was living good like the average person, but something has occurred in their life that has crippled them, amen, um, and we call those or we recognize them as being marginalized, amen, they can't do or they're not in a position to do as uh, the majority or the average of society that's able to sustain themselves. These marginalized people are special people. Whatever situation they may be in, um, it's not always about tangible, but a lot of times it's just a circumstance that they have been uh, encountered with in life that causes them to lose their footing, amen? Um, cause a great instability in their life. Those are the marginalized people. And so verse 14 says, don't take advantage of them. They may be poor. They may be destitute. They may be in a position where they have to work as slaves. Amen. For you, uh, whether they follow, whether they are fellow Israelites, the scripture says in verse 14, or they may be foreigners living in your own town. Amen. So, um, again, we are dealing with a lot of um, cases where you have people that are on the run, uh, refugees uh, that are on the run, people that are homeless, um, people that have been uh, hurt by life, hurt by people, hurt by people in their family. They can be going from church to church, amen, um, and these are these destitute people. They are seekers. They are uh, people in transit. Um, and they're just trying to find a better way concerning their situation. Well, the Bible is telling us when you see a person in such a position and you know they have issues, um, we have a lot of children, a lot of young people that are running away from home, uh, very vulnerable, um, and they come across people who say that they want to help them, but all the while they are looking for something that they can gain from them. And they exploit them because of their marginalized situation that they are in. God is telling us, if you come across a person in such situation, do not exploit them. Do not take advantage of them and their situation. All right? And here's why. Verse 15, he says, but you must pay them. Amen? Pay them their wages if they are slaves, if they are workers of yours. Pay them their wages each day. Before sunset, okay? Do not hold out from them and make them wait, amen, for something that you owe them or something that you should be giving them, amen? Um, he says, because they are poor. You have to recognize they have need. They are poor and they are counting on it. Whatever it is that you're supposed to be or promising to give them, they are counting on it. If it is services, it could be governmental services, don't hold and play games. It could be a tax refund. Sometimes people are waiting on their tax refunds in order to be able to support them. Don't just put them on the waiting list, amen, when a waiting list is not necessary. Give to them what they are due, amen, and do it right away because you wouldn't want to be on the end where someone is making you wait, amen. And so this is what God is saying. 
uh, give them what you owe them. Okay? And so he says, if you don't, they may cry out to the Lord against you. So in other words, these people are going to be consulting heaven saying, Lord, what's up with this? Amen? Uh, they are supposed to be a church. They are supposed to be, or they claim to be people of God. They are supposed to be a government service. Amen? That it is their position to give. Why are they not giving? Amen? And so there's an expectation here, even from this person that may be marginalized, they know that there is a better way, a just due that they are supposed to be receiving. If they don't receive it, they're going to God. They're looking to heaven. Amen. And the Bible says in this latter 15th verse that it will be counted against you as a sin. You make them wait. You exploit them. You marginalize them. You silence them because you feel they are unworthy. Amen. Then the Bible said that's that's a sin that's going to be attributed to our account. Give, amen, um, as you have to give, amen. Um, this will cause you to be blessed, amen. God recognizes this, amen. All right, so verse 16. Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children, nor for the sins of their parents. Um, nor the children for the sins of their parents. Those deserving to die must be put to death for their own crimes. So we're talking about personal accountability. Now, sometimes we may bring up uh, the other rule. There's a formal rule also that is written in the books. Amen. And I believe... It is somewhere in Exodus, somewhere around that first law that was written around the Ten Commandments in Exodus. And also, there uh, Moses talks about, I think in the first part of the first chapter or fifth chapter, I think, around Deuteronomy. Um, you may hear the saying that God causes his curse to be against the third, or to be against the children of the sins of the father to the third and the fourth generation, okay? So, um, we, you know, this is two different perspectives, this, this verse that we're reading here in the 16th verse, and also this other uh, portion of scripture that was given to us, but to the ones that respect, love, and follow God's word, God says that he will show favor upon them, and their generations for hundreds of generations to come. Amen. So in other words, the blessing will outweigh the curse. But that curse um, as a consequence to the father's sins, maybe the uh, retribution didn't fall upon the person who immediately committed the crime. Maybe they died or whatever. God, uh, his grace, his mercy, it kept the consequence of or the wage of sin from coming down on that person that committed a crime. But God says in his word in this other portion of scripture that that sin is still going to be paid for. It has to be paid for because that is the law. The wages of sin is death. Amen. But God is saying here in a different perspective through Moses in this verse, verse 16, that the parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children. Uh, nor children for the sins of their parents and that those that do the crime, they're going to be the ones that's going to be put to death. So again, God is establishing, this is the government specifically that God is establishing before the children of Israel. Now, if they stay out of sin, amen, if they do not, excuse me, if they do not break those uh, Ten Commandments, amen, thou shalt not murder, don't commit idolatry, adultery, um, and, and, and the others, that, uh, that will keep them, amen, from just simply having to have to pay for sins, amen, or even passing anything down to the children that the parents have done and have not repented of, amen, but remember, they got Moses, 
Moses is their priest. Moses is able to intercede on their behalf, which is Moses' representation of God's mercy. Amen. Him going to God to plead for the mercy of the people. Um, so we thank God for that. And we encourage you, whatever the sin may be, and we all have sin, that continuously lay that sin at the altar, continuously ask for uh, repentance and covering and washing from that sin so those sins just don't remain on the record amen god's grace and his blood is sufficient to cover our sins if we bring them to him so we have no excuse today because jesus stands amen as the uh the cover of our sin amen so we don't need to leave sins to the next generation repent now amen so those sins can be washed away and forgiven Verse 17, true justice, true justice must be given to foreigners living among you and to the orphans. And you must never accept a widow's garment, her covering, as a security for her debt. So he talks here again about the vulnerable of the population, of the community, the foreigners that are passing through. Um, people that you don't know, they are not associated with your community, but they are passing through foreigners, orphans, amen, those who have lost their parents, amen, um, ho uh, uh, motherless, fatherless children. And then he talks about the widow, all of these people throughout scripture, even open to the New Testament, in these categories, the orphans, the widows, the foreigners, um, even the slaves, amen, God took consideration of them. Amen. They were important in God's eyes and they ought to be important to our eyes as well. But God is telling them uh, uh, to don't take advantage of them. Amen. True justice. Treat them fair. Treat them godly. Treat them right. Be empathetic towards them. Amen. Because they are already disenfranchised. Amen. They've already been through. They are already suffering. Amen. They are already ill and they are uh they may be crippled in some kind of way in their life. Don't take advantage of them. Treat them right. Treat them fair. Verse 18. Always remember that you were slaves. And that's the thing. We got to remember. We weren't always in good positions in our life. God gives all of us a testimony. Amen. That can humble us. Amen. And we should never lose that testimony. Because it is there to keep us humble, amen, uh, towards others and towards God. Always remember that when you were slaves, when you was marginalized in Egypt, that the Lord your God redeemed you from your slavery. He brought you out. He saved you. And that is why God says in the scripture, I'm giving you this command today because I want you to remember, okay, um, verse 19, when you are harvesting your crops. These last three verses, we're going to talk about sharing, making provision for others, providing for others intentionally, providing for others so that others may have. When you are harvesting your crops and forget to bring in a bundle of grain from your field, listen, don't go back out to get. Don't try to go back. Oh, I forgot. I'm going back out tomorrow because I want to get everything that's in the field. Amen. But but he instructs him, no. Leave it for the foreigners. <clears throat> Leave it for the orphans. Leave it for the widows. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all that you do. Amen? Pro making provision for the stranger. And when you beat the olives from your olive trees, don't go over the boughs or the bowls twice. Okay? You beat the olives, okay, whatever you don't pick up the first time, just leave it. Leave the remaining olives for the foreigners, the orphans, and the widows. He's looking out for them. Amen. And our last verse, verse 21, it says that when you gather the grapes in your vineyard, don't glean the vines after they are picked. Don't glean them. Amen. But leave the remaining grapes for the foreigners, for the orphans, and for the widows. Amen. So God is telling them to be intentional to leave something behind um, we can bring this to a practical sense today because a lot of us have surplus. We, we have surplus on our shelves. 
We have surplus in our closets. We have surplus in the change, little thing in, in the car. Amen. Uh, so we have something extra that we can give. And God is telling us to intentionally look around. Make it your purpose. Make it your business to leave something. You ain't always got to tell them you're leaving it. But just leave it. Amen. So that the person that uh, God may send can pick it up. Sometimes you can drop a dollar along the way in a way where you know some foot traffic is going to be coming. And God will, just like he was able to let the fish bring the corn of money. Amen. God will allow the right person to come through that is in need to pick up the seed that you drop, that their life may be blessed and that your life may be blessed because you went out of your way to purposely bless another person. God is telling us to be kind. He's telling us to be generous. He's telling us to be nice. He's telling us how to be able to treat other people right. Amen. That may not be rightly being treated. Amen. So let us not marginalize uh, people. Amen. But let us be just. Let us be right towards them. Let us uh, present to them God. Amen. Amen. And God is a giver. And so he's not a taker. God is a giver. Amen. And we have all we need coming directly from our source, God. But we do have an opportunity in this world to people who may not know God as their source to be in uh, a conduit that God can be able to bless them through us. So look around. What do you have to give? Amen. Uh, look in your closet. What do you have to give? Amen. You have books on the shelf. What do you have? Clear out your shelves. Amen. Clear out the cupboards. Amen. So that we can make preparation and provision for others who may not have. Amen. And even in our, um, our lessons, the last few lessons, why do we do this? Because God wants to put us in a position to not only live, but to inherit all of the other promises that he wants to give us. Amen. We have a promised land we're going after too. Amen. And it's only when we can perfect this right here, being just and right towards the vulnerable, that we can enter into the next level or the next dimension of our promised land. So think about it. Amen. You think you got much now? But you ain't seen all that God wants to give you. Greater things can come. But we have to apply this word in order to unlock that next dimension. All right? So that is our word. We thank you for tuning in to the message of this word. And not just hear it, but to apply. Hear and do the word. By any means necessary. Amen? That is our prayer. So we thank you. And we bless you as you go into this new week. Amen? In preparation. Um, of this word for the lesson that will be on January the 30th, amen, perhaps within your congregation or um, just simply meditating on this word as we approach the date of this lesson. So again, I'm Minister Coleman and I'm signing off. I got a job to go to, amen, and pray for me because I'm also a student, amen. Uh, yup, I'm back in school. So Life gets hectic during the week, so you may be getting these lessons early just so my brain is there for uh, being able to give you the best of my brain before that class uh, comes upon me and gives me a whipping. Amen? So continue to pray for me as I am praying for you. God bless you. Love you. And thank you again for all of the viewers and subscribers and likers of the content of this lesson. Have a blessed week ahead. Bye-bye.